can. Their brands are paying them more money and they get to stick with the team that has taken them to the playoffs every year. They have a better shot of going to the Super Bowl with us than they do say the Raiders for everybody knows that or mm-hmm. the Broncos. Yeah. Okay. If it's a, you know, a $50 million contract difference, I understand. Okay. If you're going to make an extra 50 million for a year, an extra year on your contract, go for it. Mm-hmm. You know, kind of like Trent Williams. Okay. I mean, he went, he got an extra year and a few extra million, but I'd rather have a learned over Brown. Uh, huh? I'd rather have a learned Brown. Oh, me too. Without fail, everybody that wanted to c- complain about how bad Orlando Brown was playing, he wasn't playing bad. He wasn't playing bad. No, but and people complained about him actually making the effort to try yeah. to get these players that end up going to other teams. So Yeah. I mean, if, all these people that bitched about him at the beginning of the season, well, well that was a horrible pickup. What, Veach failed on that one? Boy, he really missed that. Blah, blah, blah. Everybody bragged about it. Now look how bad he's playing. He, he's in the Pro Bowl. He's one of the better players. On, actually, the reason why we have a top two offensive line, one of the reasons. Mm-hmm. So why, why are you guys complaining about somebody that you really don't understand? Mm-hmm. You know, it, it, it just, it's beyond me. And the, that right there, bring it backwards. Let's roll it back. That's the negativity that comes out of one tweet from one idiot that's got 40,000 followers. Mm-hmm. That's what happens. Because you got one guy that says, oh, he's just, he's just not playing very well. Then all these other guys just bleed off that negativity. And it just, it just follows them everywhere they go. It, it, I, I, I've never seen so much negativity as I have over the last year and a half, two years. I get COVID really put a lot of people, I thought it would change them for the better. And it didn't, it made them worse for the, for the most part. Um, but the negativity has just got to, you got to encourage these guys. They're humans. You know, we set it on spaces. We set it on a lot of different things. You've got to encourage these guys because if you don't, they're not going to want to be around you and they're not going to want to play for you. That's true. They play for the fans just as much as they play for themselves and they play for the team and their contract. Mm-hmm. So, you know, they love when fans sit there and say, you think Tyron Matthew doesn't love the fact that people say you're the best damn safety in the league? You're the smartest safety in the league? Yeah, well, he loves it. He's been playing. Mm-hmm. But it's true, though. That's the difference. There's the difference between saying, okay, Tyron, you know what? You have got the highest IQ for any safety in football versus Tyron Matthew is an average player, but people just make him out to be better than he is. There's the difference of how you encourage a player to want, not only want to stick around, but want to play harder for the fan base that they're in. You know, a lot of players, they follow, they, 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 they'll say, okay, you want to be negative? Let me show you what negative, let me show you how bad I can play. If you think I'm playing bad now, because it gets in their psyche, you know, just like everybody else. We've used this analogy numerous times. If you worked at McDonald's and you handed me a sack to the drive-thru and every day I came into that drive-thru and I got an egg McMuffin and I said, you suck at folding that bag. I, you can't even hand a bag out the window right. What's wrong with you? You suck at your job. If I did that every day, how do you think you would feel? Regardless, if you work at McDonald's, if you work at uh, CNN, or if you work, no matter where you work, it's a hard thing to sit there and get trashed every day by your own fan base, especially mm-hmm. when you're not doing anything wrong. Mm-hmm. That's the difference. You know, if you were doing something absolutely wrong, I was like, okay, well, you know what? you can be critical to a degree, but your ass ain't going to fill his shoes. So don't sit there and call him trash because you sure as hell ain't going to fill his shoes. I don't know one person in our fan base that can go in there right now and fill that man's shoes. So, you know, or any other fan base for that matter. And they, and other fan bases are worse, way worse than ours. Yeah. Oh I my think God. We finally tapered it down. Like when winning, but oh my goodness, some of these fans were like, you guys are complaining. This could be, a lot worse than what yeah. you see with other teams. Yeah. Like you can watch Cowboys highlights only can watch them is on VHS tape. I mean, if you're being yeah. honest. Yeah. Yeah. That's I mean, the last like, time they won it. Yeah. It's like Pittsburgh. Everybody says, what do you mean? We're the most spo- spoiled fan base in the league. You're talking about 1974. You mother dude. Half the people that watch football right now weren't alive when you were, they weren't really alive the, during that time, during yeah. that time frame. So to sit there and brag about something that happened 40 years ago, and say you're a spoiled fan base? Come on, man. Yeah, they won in 
2010, and they really haven't been relevant. But, you know, it is, it is what it is. I, the Chiefs are winning, and I think that it's a great great thing to see them continue to push through. But before we go, man, what are your score predictions for this game? <laughs> I don't even know at this point. Um, I've been trying to come up with that one for a while. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I guess it depends on who plays. Okay, uh, let's just – we'll just do this. Go, your score prediction of Travis Kelsey and Tito won't play. If they don't this play score prediction. with the way our defense is playing, I'm going to say 24 nothing. Then we're going to shut them out. Yeah. I'm, let me bring this back. Mm-hmm. Let me go back one. I'm going to say 24 to three. 24 to three? Yeah. If they okay. play, I think that's fair. If, if, if mm-hmm. Tyreek and Kelsey play, I think it's going to be more like, 34 to 38 to 3 to 38 to 6. Now, not to miss, we have to stop the run game because Najee Harris is running like crazy. But Willie yes. Gay is back, so that should be good. My score prediction, I'm going to say 24. I'm going to say 18. I would not be surprised if the Steelers put some points up because this is a primetime game. I mean, it's the Steelers. They're trying to continue to show that they're relevant, even though they really aren't. So I think this is a good game to go in and let's knock them off their pedestal. But I think 24-18, that's without Tyreek Hill and Travis Kelsey. I think Mahomes and them can still score. I think we're going to get quite a few field goals possibly due to the fact that the offense may not be as strong. But I think this is a game that allows Mahomes to play Mahomes to bring up these other guys who are not talked about. Let's build them up to where they can help us win this game. Well, the narrative that Mahomes can't win without his guys, I mean, will go away if they can, if they can win. It's a – Afternoon game. Mm-hmm. So Steelers right now are seven, six, and one. Mm-hmm. We're ten and four. Um, not that that matters at all. Um, it's any given Sunday. You don't know is. who's going to win. I mean, honestly, that that doesn't mean anything. I'm just looking at. I I don't remember the last time we tied anyone, but um, I don't think. Yeah, that's. What- a long time. Long time. Um, the Steelers seem to do that a lot. They, the Steelers, and there's a couple of the teams that always have ties, it seems like, you know, almost every year, every other year. The Cardinals are one. Yeah, the Cardinals. Those are the only two teams that I can think of. Yeah, it's just it's weird that they have a lot of ties. Um, mm-hmm. But anyway, looking at their, their offense, yes, they do have a good run game. But Ben better just keep the ball out of the air because his arm is noodle. And if you got Ingram coming at you and you go to throw that ball up in the air, it's going to get snagged. Mm-hmm. I mean, with the guys we got out on the field, especially with everybody coming back, you know, on our defensive side anyway, um, mm-hmm. it's going to be a, and Snead, you know, he's going to come out there and play hard for his guys. Cause they play hard for him. When mm-hmm. He was gone. So um, it's going to be, I think it's going to be a little different game than a lot of people think it is. Is it going to be a tougher game? I think out of the three that we got left, it's probably the toughest one. I would uh, agree. So Yeah, I would agree. That this is probably the toughest game out of three games we have, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it is what it is. I mean, it, it's – they got a a good – deep. well, what do you say? I guess what, top 20 defense? and uh, I would say the show's defense is and- – yeah, so I mean, I would say their defense is proven their top 10. They have some playmakers, they got some studs on that side of the ball. Who have they played though? That's my question. They and played who- the Bills, they shut them out in the first game of the season. They played some teams pretty hard. Now, they've been scored upon, yeah, but they played some consistently good defensive football for the most part. And that, I mean, they didn't let just left teams walk for them, they, they showed up when they needed to. Well, but I, I know, know the defense the team- has to be right now, so mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. That's fair, but again, like you said, with the Chiefs, what I mean, what were you gonna say with the Chiefs? I mean, I just killing Kelsey play. I think they're gonna have their number, but if we can have, if they don't play, we have guys like Powell if he gets elevated. If we got um a Pringle, um Harmon play, I think we're gonna see is it's gonna be a little tougher, but I think we can. Just do play calling execution by Reed and other guys. I think we have a chance to show, like, look, see, Mahomes can win with these other guys, too. It's not just Hill and Kelsey. You have to have good players in order to make your teams good. So, we'll stop getting Josh mad Gordon because does. you knew how to draft it. Huh? Yeah. yeah, and Josh Gordon plays, too. So, I mean, we're at yeah. a point where it's like, okay, we'll see what's going to happen. So, yeah. I mean, this is a perfect opportunity for him if those guys don't play mm-hmm. to show up and show out. And mm-hmm. I know he's been wanting to do it. Again, he was held back when he got – brought here 
but um, you know, he'd be about three or four weeks probably advanced if things worked out a little differently when he was brought here. But mm -hmm. um, it is what it is. I mean, he, I think this is his time to shine. And once mm -hmm. he, and he started to do it, he actually started to shine. And then mm -hmm. of course COVID hit, but I think he's going to come. I think he's going to bring the heat. You know, if he's, I agree. If he's involved. He's going to bring the heat. And mm -hmm. this is a great opportunity for him to show against a good defense. What he can, what he can do. do. Yep. Mm -hmm. So that is true. Um, we didn't want to make this about, uh, the show about the negative stuff on Twitter, but, um, it was just so much of it that we had to bring it up because it was like, God, man, they were blaming players who, who gave him all COVID. Was it Gordon? Did he do it? Why? I mean, come on people. There, there's so many ways you can catch that stuff. Why do you blame one player? I yeah. mean, honestly, why put it on one person? How do they, you know, it's not how that works. It's, it's, it just isn't. I mean, everybody goes out, everybody does what they do. Everybody leaves their house. Uh, so, I mean, we, we had to expect this was going to happen. I don't know of any team yet, other than the chargers that haven't been riddled by COVID. It seems like they haven't been riddled a lot by it. And I don't know what they look like. I know they got a few players on COVID list right now, but nothing major. Um, mm. their time, their time, you know, and it is warmer and in, in, it's a little warmer in, in California. And, uh, I mean, even the Ram, the, the Rams got riddled with it. Mm -hmm. So it just affects everyone differently. So it does. How, how I, I, I think it. every team's going to have their shot at, I mean, they have their time with COVID. Every team will have their time. They may mm -hmm. not have 13 to 17 players on there, but they may have seven of their top players, eight of their mm -hmm. top players. And then what are you going to do then? You know, I mean, it just, that's why you got to have depth. Mm -hmm. That's that's just the whole thing. You that is true. Have that depth. So you got to have that. So, yep. but anyway, um, Christmas, man. Christmas, Christmas is yeah. up, it's almost here. It's almost here. So another couple of days, we'll be celebrating Christmas, and um, then we'll be hopefully celebrating a win on Sunday. Yep. Mm -hmm. I don't know about you, but I'm 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 ready for this game. I'm ready for it too, man. It'd be nice to see him come back and knock another team in their mouth and win. I think that's what we all want to see. That's it. I mean, you know, we get past this one with this COVID issue. Uh, I, I I don't see anybody stopping us after that point. Mm -hmm. I just don't. Yeah. I, I don't know why. I just, I got that feeling, man. Mm -hmm. I hope I'm I right. Hear you, man. I got that feeling. I hear you. But anyway, um, that's all I got, man. You got anything yeah. else? I think we're all good, man. We pretty much covered everything. All right, man. Everybody out there, check out www.cheesefocus.com. We got uh, Brandon's stats are up there now. We're going to be adding to those as we go. Um, he did have surgery, so he's probably going to be down a little bit for a while, but um, I'm sure he's still going to figure out a way of putting up stats because he never quits. Check out Charles's articles because he's on fire every time. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to be adding more stuff to it. Just subscribe because even if you're, you know, you don't, see something you may not like right now you're going to like it in the future it's just mm -hmm. taking you know it takes time to build a really mm -hmm. strong good website and yep. making changes as we go and mm -hmm. seeing things that we want to change and we make those changes so yep. uh, follow us on Spreaker or I mean I'm sorry our show's on Spreaker but follow us on whatever podcast channel you listen to Instagram and Twitter and um, we're still working on the Facebook page there's a disconnect between instagram and facebook and it's virtually impossible to get them on the phone so um but other than that just keep, keep following guys because you're gonna mm -hmm. you're gonna like what you see yep. and uh coming up next after well maybe at the beginning of this game we got a giveaway we yeah do, we do we got a giveaway at the beginning of this game so listen up for sunday about we'll put it out about what hour before the game maybe probably about two o'clock about two o'clock. Two CT. Two CT. Um, listen for the giveaway, and then um, that's all I got. Yeah. Uh, well, I just say JP already told everyone, but shipping's bad, so your packages will be coming soon. Yes. And then yes. also for the if we are looking for more writers and maybe a graphics person, so the people who have reached us on Twitter. You have not gotten back to us. So we're going yeah. to be also looking at other people. So if you're interested in wanting to writing or graphics, but we're mainly looking for writers, DM us at Cheese Focus so we can talk with you. 
Um, we got one good right.